Willkommen bei Ground and Pound TV. Elia Stefanescu hier vor Ort in Breslau mit Matt Horwich an meiner Seite. Ein Mann, den man, äh, ich denke mal, kennen sollte, wenn man MMA-Fan ist. Er war schon überall in der UFC, Strike Force. Und äh, jetzt ist er bei äh, KSW erneut in Aktion. Matt, I just told the viewers that uh, you're a well-known fighter, a veteran that fought over in the UFC in Strike Force. Now you're back at KSW. Let us know uh, yeah, what brought you here. Well, KSW treats the fighters really great. Um, they're great people, uh, Martin and Magic, and it's always a great experience. Um, the Polish fans are wonderful and amazing. I love it here. I'm actually staying for two weeks after the fight, so anyone that wants to grab dinner can hit me up, or if they have any classes for me to teach, or just want to hang out and grab a beer, whatever, uh, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter, Matt Horwich. Yes, yeah, sounds good. The man for the people, so to speak, here in Poland. Um, talking about Poland, um, here at the airport in uh, Breslau, we heard you had some trouble. Are the rumors true or uh, are people just talking? Uh, just talking. I don't have any trouble getting through. Well, <laughs> that sounds good, I think. Um, also, uh, today is the day of the weigh-in. Uh, there are some hours left. Um, how are you feeling right now and uh, how is your weight doing? Uh, my weight's doing good. I'm on weight. It was an easier cut this time. Usually I cut from 225 pounds. This time I cut from 211 pounds. So I got an IV to rehydrate and I got a friend of mine here bringing me some good food and uh, good vegetables and avocados and coconuts for energy. So I'm feeling good. I think that's the most important part that you feel good. But um, how much do you usually cut? Because um, yeah, we know some fighters uh, are pretty uh, heavy before the fight. Some uh, do it uh, weeks before. Um, you cut very, very uh, late, so to speak. Is that your thing? Yeah, I'd rather just train and focus on that and feel good and deal with it all later. Usually, I usually cut. Um, The weekend b before the fight, maybe two weeks before the fight, eat a little lighter, but nothing drastic. Then like the week uh, before I fly out, like I have a egg and bacon sandwich from Whole Foods. You're welcome for the advertisement, Whole Foods. And then I uh, go to training and eat my good broccoli and spinach. And maybe uh, some nuts from Whole Foods and uh, yogurt and for dinner and just light like that and then the last couple days I can't really eat anything I fast and try to drink lots of water to get hydrated for the cut and rinse everything out and clean out my system yeah. sounds very healthy um, are you usually eating very healthy or uh, is it uh, only for fighting I always eat healthy um, I got addicted to uh, feeling healthy and uh, training I mean, it's a, it's a great spiritual high to uh, tap into that limitless potential God gives us all to eat good and train good and sleep good and feel like a real-life superhero. And since I was a kid, I was inspired by superheroes like the X-Men and Wolverine to, uh, to want to uh, tap into God's limitless potential and do great things. And all things are possible to them who believe. So I just want to go out in this fight and... Uh, believe God's got great things in store and go in with courage and leave it all out there because the strongest soldier in God's army of light is a soldier of courage, not of fear. You're talking about uh, changing your life. Um, let's go back. You, you had some trouble in the past and uh, then you found uh, yeah, the new belief, so to speak, and, and you changed for the better. Um, maybe you can update us there for some people that don't know you. Well, you know, to me, life's a lot of trial and error. Um, I was raised by a single mom, uh, God bless her, um, but I, I think uh, sometimes kids need like a, a father figure to kind of lay down the law because women are too nice and beautiful. Um, so I was kind of a hellion kid and I changed a lot when I got some real life street experience and traveling around and walked the earth and uh, tried to learn guitar and to be a musician and artist and when I was a kid growing up I watched uh, 
Bloodsport and Bruce Lee movies and went back and forth between wanting to be a martial artist and wanting to be a musician. And I learned a lot of morals from Wolverine and uh, that he's willing to lay down his life for a greater cause and wild and free and courageous and he was always one of my heroes. So when I got some real life street experience, um, I learned a lot of loyalty and a lot of good lessons in life. I mean, part of the time, a small part of the time, I messed with some hard drugs, but that was just like one year, like the worst year of my life, like a small part when I first got out on the streets. But most of it, I just hung out with uh, good hippie people and met a lot of really amazing people. And it's a really amazing experience that a lot of people haven't had the chance to get. I mean, a lot of people go to college and make the right choices and they're book smart. And I try to learn what I can to be educated on quantum physics and the latest science. But I think a lot of the people that went to college and did all the right things would change their outlook a lot if they had any real life street experience. Yeah, I think you might be right there. Also, um, like you said, quantum physics. Um, let us know about uh, quantum mechanics. Let us know um, how you how you uh, went that path, so, so to speak. How um, did you get interested in that? Well, as a martial artist, our journeys to train our mind and body and spirit. Um, and I've always been interesting in uh, in God's artwork and how our universe works and. Uh, and the, the same way you can learn a lot about Pablo Picasso or uh, Salvador Dali by studying their paintings, you can learn a lot about God's style of creativity by studying the universe. And it's all, it's like we're all surfing this infinitely accelerating current of creativity and dreams within dreams with the Big Bang and the universe's expansion. And we all have that limitless individuality and uniqueness to tap into that God gave us. And that relativity, I mean, by understanding ourselves better and who were that limitless potential we understand others better and have a greater respect for them and trying to inspire them to tap into God's limitless potential and creativity and uh, the beauty of quantum physics is like you can't measure particles position and momentum simultaneously because they have no fixed localization they're all connected by a vast sea of energy of empty space of potentiality and we're more empty space than we are actual matter uh, electrons protons and neutrons but that empty space is filled with electromagnetic fluctuations of virtual particles blinking in and out of existence and annihilating with their antimatter counterparticles and uh, it blankets empty space with an almost metaphysical aura it's really beautiful uh, some of them are force carrying particles like gravitons which carry out the force of gravity and are constantly fluctuating blinking in and out of existence and then there's photons that carry out the force of electromagnetism and light. And then there's gluons that carry out the strong force that hold the quarks together to form the protons and neutrons in the atoms. And then there's the vector bosons that carry out the weak nuclear force, which cause particles to decay into a different particle when they collide, plus the energy transmission. And that's how the particle accelerators work. They collide protons and then they decay into different particles. And we study them and see what they're doing, if we can learn more about dark energy or dark matter and we're pretty sure we discovered the Higgs particle now which is nicknamed the God particle because it gives everything its mass and allows the universe to come out of the void into existence mm. and the beauty of it is empty space is nature's not to be empty it's filled with virtual particles blinking in and out of existence every once in a while one of them's allowed to become real and that's what could have caused the Big Bang and the beginning of our universe and one of the theories and if our universe could come out of the void into existence, why wouldn't an infinite and other universes? And if everything that could happen does happen, then like uh, God and the spirit of love and an intelligent design happens, like chaos ca cancels itself out. If there are no pure facts or eternal truths, is that a pure fact or eternal truth? It cancels itself out. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Empty space is nature's not to be empty, and it's a beautiful metaphysical glow of creativity. And the more we know and discover, the more we discover there is to discover. God never runs out of new surprises and creativity and artistic freedom. Like I said, there's always much to discover in, in uh, that area. I think you educated people 
back in the year when you talked about it the first time and made it interesting, people were googling uh, it up, I guess, uh, maybe before the Big Bang Theory series was popular, so uh, kudos to you. Um, let's talk about faith a little bit, because you're a man that believes in God, obviously. Um, there are many fighters that don't even uh, think about that. Do you think um, this brings you some, um, yeah, let's say, more power to the fight that you're uh, uh, mentally more focused uh, for your fights? Well, abs of that? absolutely. Um, it gives me a big advantage that, uh, that I like. Uh, I'm addicted to the spiritual high of positive choices. I don't party or anything. I just uh, train and stay focused and uh, have uh, good faith, good people praying for me, a uh, good positive influence, good group. And that's a huge advantage in life. And um, I'm thankful for, for all the beautiful experiences. Um, and I hope to make the most out of this life by God's grace and love and limitlessness. And I got a lot of great opportunities open up. Um, I give a shout out to Matt Farnsworth and Diane Foster, um, my friends that I'm working with on the Orphan Killer horror movie. And they're hoping uh, one of my dreams to come true because I always wanted to work on a horror movie. I love the art of horror how like life is good warring against evil and a lot of people live like they're not in a war and they say oh I don't believe in violence but to me that's just stupid uh, how can you not believe in violence there's wars everywhere and closing your eyes and not believing and it doesn't make it not exist if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything and some things are worth uh, worth having the courage to fight for by the spirit of love and limitlessness so um, the horror movies do have a chance to make people educated on that. Like I love what Wes Craven did with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, how there's the negative and positive dream gates and Fred Krueger takes anything you fear, like the serpent uh, attacks any of our doubts or anything we fear. And courage isn't the absence of fear, it's acting in spite of fear and life's a fight. We got to fight for our dreams and uh, get up and take a swing for things and try to do as much good as we can by uh, God, by Jesus' grace and love and limitlessness. You just mentioned the movie that you're uh, working for in the next month, I guess. Um, let, uh, let us know what's uh, going on there, what's the story and where can uh, your fans get more info on that? Uh, you can get more info. Um, there's the Orphan Killer store. If you Google the Orphan Killer store, you can find where you can order it and watch the first one of it. And we're going to start shooting the second one in uh, March, hopefully. Me and Mayhem Miller are going to work with Matt and Diane. And they're such beautiful artistic people. So I'm really thankful to God uh, for the experience. And um, so lots of beautiful things are happening and it's really beautiful that once you discover your dream it leads to new depths and new dreams to grow as an artist and hopefully MMA is going to be a stepping stone for that for me to grow as an artist and creative expression and uh, creative writing and acting and like a lot of the fighters are getting into and I can continue Evan Tanner's journey and uh, Evan Tanner had a great vision uh, in the army of one, tapping into our limitless potential and doing great things and inspiring each other and using MMA to grow as an artist. And after he uh, moved on out into the wild, I always considered it uh, my, my uh, journey to carry on his journey. My idea of the army of one's a little different, like we're all one beautiful multiverse family of limitless potential and we're all in this together and we all have limitless potential to follow our dreams and by do that inspire kids to follow their dreams and tap into their limitless potential. I want to write a comic book called The Limit Smasher about a regular guy tapping into God's love and limitless potential to be a real life superhero. Uh, that would uh, inspire kids to tap into their limitless potential and smash limits athletically and artistically and spiritually. Because if someone told me when I was their age how much potential God gave us to tap into and in creativity, I would have progressed a whole lot more now. You're a multi-talented guy, as we see. You also mentioned before uh, music that was a part of your life. Um, is it still? Yeah, I play classical guitar. Um, it's great for the mind. Unfortunately, I left my guitar in my friend's car, so I wasn't really able to play like I wanted to before this fight. Mm -hmm. But it's, it gave me some time just to focus on training anyway. But I love learning new classical guitar on YouTube. And um, it's, uh, 
it's like an MMA or the art of anything in life. You can't try too hard or you'll mess up hitting the notes or, or the combos. And you don't want to overthink it or underthink it. You've got to find that perfect balance by God's grace and flow. Yeah, like you said, you're two weeks uh, here in Poland. Maybe some Polish people, fans of yours, will bring you some guitar of, uh, yeah, of them and let you, uh, let you play for those two weeks to, to have that time, something to do after the fight. Um, talking about this fight, Piotr Struz, your opponent, um, what do you know about him and uh, what fight do you expect? There wasn't a lot of footage out there on him. He's got uh, good boxing, decent leg kicks. Um, he's a good fighter, ambitious kid with a, a bright future, good potential. But um, I never give away too much of my strategy. We got a good game plan. Uh, what I can't, what I do want to say for the fight is I plan on going out with faith and courage and leaving it all out there and. Uh, Tapping into God's limitless potential, the strongest soldier in God's army of light is a soldier of courage and not of fear. So I pray for good courage to go out and leave it all out there for everyone. Sounds good. The very last question. I'm not sure if you will give us an answer. Do you have a prediction for this fight? How, uh, how will it end? Uh, I'm seeing my hands raised in victory um, by the spirit of love. Uh, faith produces great results. So... I'm seeing that. Um, as far as the strategy, I never give anything away till afterwards we can talk about it. All right, thanks very much for your time. And uh, yeah, like you said, we speak with you afterwards and uh, have a good uh, yeah, weight cut way in uh, later on and we'll see you later. God bless, thank you. Uh, also, I want to thank my, uh, thank my sponsors in Manto. Uh, they, I really appreciate them sponsoring me and um, It uh, helps the fighters to make a living and everything, so shout out to Manto. God bless you guys. Thanks so much. And uh, shout out to the Polish fans and KSW for treating the fighters amazing. And uh, to all my friends, God bless. Love everyone. Uh, that should do it. Thanks again.